Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, thought I'd just start off with a bit background as to why I completed this research. And I guess the reason with most waiting is that shoulder pain is the most common musculoskeletal complaint in water polo players. And um, there was evidence sh shown of that in our national squad. Most previous studies uh, have been of an epidemiological nature and have provided information mainly on the inc incidence of shoulder pain and various patho pathology surrounding shoulder pain, but haven't actually described why athletes uh, experience such a high incidence of pain in, in the sport. Um, there have been some studies that have looked at shoulder strength and sh uh, shoulder mobility, and those studies have suggested that uh, shoulder pain is more likely to be attributed to throwing actions rather than those of uh, swimming. And most of these injuries are, are, over, uh, are a result of overuse. There have been some studies that have looked at injury wor workload and injury. And those studies have been conducted in cricket and baseball, baseball specifically looking at the shoulder. And what these s studies have done, have, uh, they have discovered limits to which injury will increase within their uh, pitching and um, bowling loads. And those guidelines have been able to be put in place into training and reduce injury risk. Uh, but all in all, at this point in time, we do not know why, um, or it has not been reported why water polo players have such a high incidence of shoulder pain. So therefore, the aim of my study was to det determine whether there is a relationship between the action of goal shooting and shoulder soreness in high performance women's water polo. And my study is limited only to the quantity and frequency of shots. The methods we use, we use performance analysis methods to collect the data. And we did this using a time motion analysis system called iCoder, which this is an example of the iCoder form we used. There were two data collectors, myself and another AIS scholar, and we tracked a total of seven key shooters throughout two high performance camps, one in May and one in August. And each button is representative of one of the athletes we um, collected data on. They were each given a unique cap with a unique number. So each time they took a shot at goal, uh, the button was a button was pressed and that would timestamp that cap, cap number to a timeline of the training session. So we were able to get the quantity and the time between each shot. And a shot was just defined as any intentional release of the ball towards a goal for the purposes of scoring. The data on shoulder soreness was collected on a daily basis and it is collected on a daily basis throughout the year using an online database, which is a requirement of all athletes to enter their body soreness information, including shoulder soreness. And that information is entered on the morning of, um, in the morning when they wake up. So therefore, any data that was collected, say on a Tuesday, was attributed to the shooting workload on the Monday. Okay, with results, I sought some help from the analytics department at the AIS, of how to best manage my data seeing as we were working with such a small um, sample. And we used a, statistic, a mathematical modeling program called JUMP to create a model of shoulder soreness based on the shooting variables. And we analyzed these variables using a, using a method called REML, or Restricted Maximum Likelihood. And the fit of this prediction model of shoulder soreness explained approximately 74% of all shoulder soreness, so it's quite a good fit. And the thing that was the most significant predictor of shoulder soreness was the variances in between individual athletes. And what that means is that no one athlete experienced the same degree of shoulder soreness and they all respond differently to their shooting loads. And as you can see in this graph, athletes four and seven demonstrate significantly less shoulder pain than the rest of the group, but there are variances right through the group. The other variables that made up this model included the number of shots, the interaction between the number of shots in camp and the interaction between the number of shots, the camp and the average rest time between shots. And I'll explain them on the next couple of slides. So with regards to the number of shots, as the number of shots increased, so too did shoulder soreness. And you can see that on the graph here. And each marker is representative of a different athlete. So even here, athlete seven, who shows less shoulder soreness, their levels still tended to increase, even though at a lesser rate. With regards to the interaction between the number of shots in camp, there was a greater shoulder soreness response in May as compared to August. And you can see that in the top graph here, uh, shoulder soreness did increase with shot count. However, in August, there was a very different response in that there was really little change in shoulder soreness with increase in shot count. And that 
I think can be explained in the next slide. So this looks at the interaction between the shots, the average rest time in the camp, and shoulder soreness was shown to increase in May as shots increased, however, as rest time decreased, so as the shots became more frequent, shoulder soreness would rise, whereas in August, it was the opposite. Um, shoulder soreness would increase as the shots increased and as the average rest time between shots was increased. Through the prediction profiling, we showed that there was a similar response in shoulder soreness with an average rest time of 334 seconds. And shoulder soreness was, there was shown to be no increase with shoulder soreness in May with a rest time of greater than 500 and greater than or equal to 509 seconds or less than, and in August, um, there was no increase in shoulder soreness with a rest time of less than or equal to 159 seconds. So the graph, uh, the table down the bottom indicates that the average rest time between shots in August for each training session was 145 seconds between shots. So therefore in that graph that we saw on the previous slide where that there was no change in sh shoulder soreness, that can be explained here where it showed that there would be no increase in shoulder soreness with an average rest time of less than 159 seconds. So discussion points. It was determined that goal shooting is a predictor of shoulder soreness. However, it can be said that it's quite a complex relationship in that it's dependent not only on the individual athlete but also the number of shots and the average rest time between, um, between shots. And obviously there are factors that are influencing those sub-factors too which we haven't really looked at but I'll talk about in the next couple of slides. So I think the biggest discussion point to come out of, um, out of this study is that the shoulder, shoulder soreness is most dependent on the individual and therefore unlike our cricket and baseball studies where they found there to be one critical moment to which injury would increase, rather you're looking at individual critical moments to which shoulder soreness is likely to increase and that supports, um, shows support for individual workload monitoring between our athletes, speci specifically when we're walking, working in such a, an elite population. However, the, this study does fail to explain why the variances between athletes occur. So there's something that we need to look into a bit further. So I guess the other big point is, why were there different shoulder soreness response between camps? And we've already looked at shot frequency and saw how that influenced shoulder soreness differently in the camps. And what does that, what could that mean? Um, and we need to look at the type and duration of recovery. There have been some papers that suggest the intensity of um, activities that you're doing in between sets affect performance. Um, we didn't look at this, that in this study, but that is a factor to consider. We also need to consider the pre-camp workloads. In the cricket studies, it was um, determined that injury onset typically occurred after an increased workload of 8 to 21 days um, prior, to, prior to the injury onset. So this study has only looked specifically at the two camps, so what we really need to do is look at a longitudinal study actually monitoring their week-to-week -week workloads, and especially in a team like this where the girls are um, only camp space, so they have different workloads from their various institutes. And there's also an indication that something might be going on here with um, their pre-camp pain in that in May it was demonstrated that the athletes actually entered the camp with more pain than they did in August. So the other variables that we need to consider can also include the contribution of other activities such as throwing. They do a lot of throwing in their training. We didn't take that into account for this study but there is definitely instances there where you would say some throws could, <laughs> would contribute to um, shoulder soreness. And there's also been theorised that wrestling may also be another fac factor that contributes to shoulder soreness. So that they're the future directions for study. In, in conclusion, we've found out that the relationship between goal shooting and shoulder soreness is a complex relationship. The most effective way to manage goal shooting and shooting related shoulder pain would be to monitor goal shooting word workloads for each individual athlete and the monitoring of goal shooting workload provides meaningful information in the prediction of shoulder soreness and can be used to identify an athlete's risk, injury risk. Thank you.